My new shop needed something. It needed a fabrication table slash workbench, but a ridiculous one to fit the new space. One that I would be unlikely to ever outgrow. One to do my patriotic duty and push my stimulus check back into the local economy. This is its story. So, this is the welding table I made about eight years ago, shortly after the Harmonic Fire Pendula project, when I realized I needed to start building a real shop. I ended up using it as my primary workbench, and there's a lot about it I really loved. Three quarter inch plate for a top, which a guy I knew had lain around and was willing to part with. Small, but appropriately sized for my old shop. I got some slots water jet cut in it for clamping purposes, which also made a good place for my arbor press when needed. The power strip was used constantly, and its convenient power switch made safing the angle grinders for disc changes really simple. But it got in the way of clamping some, and having the power cords coming out horizontal meant they got knocked fairly regularly. I mostly just wanted it again, but bigger. I found the arbor press really useful, for instance, but it took up way too much space to always leave set up. And now I have the huge Wilton vise I restored earlier this year, so I need a place for that. Some 3D modeling and I had a design. 4 foot by 8, 1 inch thick, 5 inch schedule 40 pipes for legs, 3 by 5 inch rectangular tube for the frame. Overkill? In the best possible way. Getting the stock was a task in itself, since I don't currently have a truck or working trailer available. But the top exactly fit in the back of a U-Haul pickup, just as designed. I loved how the frame looked with the round legs in the 3D model, but making that happen in real life was a lot more annoying. I figured out a process using a 140mm hole saw, which is very close to the nominal OD of 5-inch Schedule 40 pipe. For each piece, I'd pick up the edge. Then zeroing the DRO, I'd move the Y-axis in by 7.6 millimeters. This worked great for both the short and the long frame beams, though the long ones needed a support at the far end. Because the hole saw only has a few inches of depth, each piece had to be flipped and cut from the other side. A pain, but the final results made it worthwhile, I think. Look at that fit! This was then quickly welded up. Next, the leveling feet. These can each handle over 7,000 pounds, so four of them would be more than enough. I wanted to weld in discs with a mounting nut inside of the legs so that it was all elegantly hidden from the outside. After drilling out a one inch hole, these were then put on a bolt to be used as a mandrel and turned down in the lathe. Three quarter inch nuts were then welded onto the resulting discs. Positioning these inside the tubes was a challenge. My upvotes weren't wide enough so I used some spare magnets and a steel bar to hold them in place for tacking. This meant that the nut was about a quarter inch recessed, which was perfect. Before I put the top on, I wanted a place to mount the leg vise from the old family ranch. I have a bigger one now, but I restored this one about 15 years ago, and it seems a shame not to have it set up. This one was probably purchased in the 1920s, along with the anvil I have, and used up until the 50s or 60s. I also welded up a simple shelf to go underneath. I love the look of expanded metal, but dear god is it a literal pain to work with. It was cheaper to order four 2 by 4 foot sections, unfortunately, which kind of maximized the amount of work to cut them down and weld them in place. Oh well. Finally, the racks on either end. Simple design, complicated setup for welding. I ended up cutting two spacers of the correct width, then getting the links just right so they would jam into place between the legs. Last thing before placing the top was a nice paint job. Do I think it needs a paint job? No, but I want it to look nice. Also, I'm not very good at painting, so I'm trying to push myself to do it more often. First, a complete wash, then a coat of primer. I ran out of primer halfway through and had to switch to a mismatched can, hence the splotchiness. Then two coats of Krylon Fusion Matte Ink Blue, which ended up coming out pretty nice looking, I think. Hoisting 600 kilos is always a bit scary, but it went fine. Fine-tuning the placement was a pain, though, since this wasn't something that could be scooched over with a mallet or even a sledgehammer. I stumbled into a really elegant solution, though. By pushing up with a 2x6 with a pallet jack, I could make the end shift either way with a surprising amount of control. The top was then welded down from the inside. Finally, time to move it into the inner shop. This was more of a hassle than moving the lathe or the mill was, but less stressful. The table is so wide, I'd have to try extremely hard to tip it over. I ended up using pretty much every machinery moving tool I have. Driving it into its final berth was about as easy as steering the Ever Given, but it felt great to get it into position. And here it is. Some features of note. 
4 inches overhang on all sides for clamping. End racks and the lower shelf, which will fill up soon enough. The new home for the restored Wilton Vice, screwed down into tapped holes. The semi-permanent home for the Arbor Press. I can take it off if I need the room, but it'll be nice to have it usually available without needing to lug it up onto the table. The new power strip, higher quality and much longer this time, and mounted upside down so it won't interfere with clamping and it'll be less likely to get damaged or have metal chips get into it. The cord is routed via some plastic clips on the inside of the frame to the other side. I often found myself using the clamping slots in the old welding table to drive out pins and such, so I added a series of holes for that exact purpose. I realized that these were just Pritchell holes like on an anvil, so I added a square hardy hole as well. This beast is practically an anvil anyway, right? Continuing the blacksmithing theme for this end of the table, the old family leg vice has a nice place to live now. If you haven't used these, they're primarily for blacksmithing. The lead screw floats inside the dynamic jaw, so you can really pound on it with a hammer without fear of damaging the screw. And the leg is there to transmit the force down into the ground. And that's it. Completely, utterly, 100% overkill. And I love it.